Hello class and professor, I'm Rebecca Allen, and I'll be doing my theorist presentation on Mary Ellen Richmond and the social work principles. Mary was born on August 5th, 1861, and she was orphaned at the age of four. She was raised by her maternal grandmother, who at the time was known as a suffragist, a spiritualist, and a radical. So Mary was surrounded by a lot of conversations that included women's suffrage, uh, racial problems, spiritualism, and just a lot of various liberal, religious, social, and political beliefs that really spurred an interest of activism and advocacy in her. Uh, it also sparked her critical thinking skills, and she started to question, you know, why? You know, why are things like this? Uh, also, she was homeschooled by her grandmother until the age of 11, and she joined an all-female high school and graduated at the age of 16 uh, as one of the youngest in her class. After graduation, she moved to New York with one of her aunts and she held a position doing hard labor and she wasn't getting paid very well. Well, her aunt got sick, had to move back to her grandmother and left Mary there alone at the age of 17. So Mary lived in poverty and she was struggling for two years in New York by herself. And she eventually had to move back in with her grandmother when she became ill also. From there, she worked as a bookkeeper until 1889, when she applied to become the assistant treasurer of the Charity Organization Societies. The Charity Organization Society piqued Mary's interest because it took a scientific approach to understanding why and how to solve problems that urbanization was causing, like poverty, unemployment, disability, uh, widows, orphans, old age, and she wanted to help bring order to the chaos that was happening in the low income uh, community. And basically what was happening is that people were looked at as worthy and unworthy, poor. And she wanted to know like why society looked at them this way. And uh, there was also lots of little charities in the community, like churches and whatnot, that were helping people, but they weren't necessarily communicating with each other. So nobody knew who was getting what. Uh, during her free time, she volunteered as a friendly volunteer and worked one-on-one -on -one with families. She began advocating for training for volunteers and to have them be paid for their social casework. Throughout her work at the cause, she perpetuated this idea that families would be better off if the work of friendly volunteers was professionalized. And in 1897, she gave a historic speech uh, at the National Conference of Charities calling for schools to train professional social workers. She became the director of the charitable organization department at, Rus at the Russell Sage Foundation in 1909. Uh, and that was just shortly after her speech. Here she conducted lots of research studies, one of them including uh, the 985 widows which investigated families, their work situations, financial resources these widows had, and how they were treated by the social welfare system. And she published these works and many others, and it really set the stage for what social work is now. So, uh, her theories and contributions. Mary didn't have necessarily, she didn't create theories, but she was a, her beliefs were a precursor to theories, like the person and environment approach and 
even the systems theory. Uh, she defined social work as the process in which developed personally through adjustments consciously affected individual by individual between men and their social environment. And she believed that people were heavily influenced by their environment, which is the person in environment or person in situation. Uh, using her research, she developed what she referred to as a social diagnosis. And she had three major principles that care had to be focused on the person within his or her situation. There must be a correspondence between the client and the environment and that clients should be involved in forming a treatment plan. Uh, she identified six sources of power, the household within the person themselves in the neighborhood, in civil agencies, in private agencies, and in public agencies. And this is a precursor, that's the precursor to the systems theory. Uh, through this approach, Mary gave clients a voice for the first time ever. And uh, her belief in doing right by others through first listening and then creating plans with them touched and changed many lives and set the stage for how social workers in the U.S. work with clients in direct practice roles today. Uh, her legacy remains. Uh, not only did she set the stage for direct practice work, but she was also involved in politics and reform and set the stage for macro practice as well. She lobbied for bills and laws like child labor reform, uh, helping create the juvenile justice system, housing. She paid special attention to laws that impacted women and children, like the abandonment law and Excuse me. Uh, Mary is known, along with Jane Adams, that she is the mother of social work. And she has a lasting and profound effect on social work and the law. And her legacy will continue. Thank you for listening. Uh, and I hope that you were able to learn and that you enjoyed learning about Mary Ellen Richmond as much as I did, because I think she is awesome. Um, these are the references that I used to find this information about her. Feel free to check them out. Again, thank you for listening.